In this lecture, we continue talking about unconstrained optimization. Specifically, we want to focus on the notion of convexity. So, convexity. The first question that we want to ask is why convexity is important. All right, let's say your function in the one dimensional case looks like this. So as this figure shows, this function has a global minimum. It also has some local minimums, right? Like local minimum. Also, at some point, your function is convex, where the point that happens to have a derivative of zero, the function's derivative is zero, is minimum. And there are some points where your function is concave. At this point, you have a local maximum. So another fact about convexity and why it's important, minimizing a convex function is much easier than a general nonlinear program. So there are a few reasons for this. If your function is generally convex, then it doesn't have local minima. Convex function do not include local Minima. So let's uh, take a look at the graphical representation of what I just talked about here. So this is a convex function. And this is a non convex function. Non convex. Function. All right, so as you can see, your convex function has a global minimum. But for the non-convex function, you may have two global minimum. You may have some local minimum points. So for the convex function, also when we talk mathematically, we are going to discuss this in the future lectures, it's more convenient to find a direct, a straightforward solution uh, to find the optimal point. So now we want to see what's the definition of convexity. How can we formalize convexity? The function f is convex if f of alpha x plus beta y is less than or equal to alpha f of x plus beta f of y for all values of x and y in the domain and alpha plus beta is equal to one, and both are positive coefficients. So if this happens, this is equivalent to having the Hessian matrix
for all x. This is a uh, history, the Hessian matrix should be positive semi definite. All right, we are going to talk about the positive semi definiteness in the introduction to linear algebra, which is going to be in the next uh, few videos. Uh, at the other side, so in contrast with the definition of convexity, uh, I'm going to talk about definition of uh, a concave function. Concave function. In this case, the function f is concave if f of alpha x plus beta y greater than equal to alpha f of x plus beta f of y for all x and y in the domain alpha plus beta is one and alpha and beta are both positive coefficients if you want to translate this into the Hessian matrix definition the Hessian matrix should be for all values of x should be negative semi-definite. Uh, let's go back to the second order, uh, su sufficient second order condition that we had for finding the optimal point. So it helps us to evaluate convexity. How to evaluate convexity? All right. So, second order sufficient conditions for convexity. Uh, actually, this is not necessarily a condition. Uh, and there are some convex functions that might not be smooth and uh, the Hessian matrix may not exist. So it's only sufficient in case the Hessian matrix, if the Hessian matrix exists. So let's note that this is not a necessary condition. What's the reason? The convex function may not be a smooth, which means if it's not a smooth, the Hessian matrix may not exist. All right. So let's review the definition of Hessian matrix one more time. So here x is x1 till xn. So this is an n by n matrix. And this is how we find each component. Right, so this function should be positive semi-definite. If it's positive semi-definite for all values of x, which is the vector of variables, then this is sufficient condition for your function to be convex. Let's take a look at a few examples. So x, the pop x, so 
for this function, f of x is not convex. What's the reason? Because the Hessian matrix should be positive, semi-definite for all values of x. But here, maybe in this area, Hessian matrix is positive, semi-definite. This area is positive, semi-definite. But for this part, h is going to be negative semi-definite because the function is concave in this area. So the important part is this positive semi-definiteness should hold for all values of x. Uh, another graphical representation for the definition of convexity and how we evaluate whether a function is convex or concave is by connecting two lines, uh, I'm talking about the one dimensional case, like f of x, x. So if you choose any two arbitrary points on your function and connect them, part of the line, your function should be below this line. So if that happens, your function is convex. On the other side, if you choose any two arbitrary points on the function and you connect them, the part which is inside the function should be below. So as you can see, your function is above the line that connects these two. So this is concave function. And the mathematical definition that we provided also does the same thing. Yes. All right. So we have F and we have X. All right. So let's choose two points, X and Y. We talked about alpha X plus beta Y where alpha plus beta is equal to one and alpha and beta are both positive. All right, so this is going to be a combination of X and Y, which is something, for example, here, alpha plus beta. All right, let's also draw our function. So this is X, this is F of X, this is y, f of y, and this is alpha plus beta, this is f of alpha x, oh, alpha x plus beta y plus beta y. All right, there's another thing that we want to evaluate. Now we are going to find the line which is connecting these two points. All right, so we want to evaluate the value of alpha x plus delta y on this line. Which is alpha f of x plus beta f of y. So based on the definition of convexity, alpha f of x plus beta f of y should be greater than or equal to f of alpha x plus beta y. This is equivalent to the definition that we talked about in the previous uh, slide. So here, when we connect any two arbitrary points in f of x, the value of your function at any certain point should be less than the value on this line. So this is uh, where the definition of convexity comes from. So this is the golden equation that you have to remember. F of alpha x plus beta y should be less than or equal to alpha f of x plus beta f of y. 
Okay, and for all x and y, and alpha plus beta is one, alpha and beta are positive. So this means your function is convex function. So in this lecture, we talked about convexity. We explained why convexity is important. And then we showed different examples of functions. For example, this function versus this function. So if your function is convex, then you can guarantee that there is a global minimum. But if your function is not convex, then you may have local minimum as well. Local, global. Then we talked about definition of convexity. For the definition, uh, we said for a given function f, f of alpha x plus beta y should be less than or equal to alpha f of x plus beta f of y for all values of x and y in the domain of this course. And alpha plus beta is one, alpha and beta are positive values. Based on definition of convexity, we also talked about definition of a concave function. And then how to evaluate convexity. We talked about second order sufficient condition. for convexity. All right, what was the second order sufficient condition? The Hessian matrix. Should be positive, semi-definite for all values of x. 